So today is February 23rd, and I have the pleasure to interview Mary Valentine about the 15 landscape paintings that she donated to St. Paul's College. Hi, Mary. It's great to be with you today. Hi, this is great. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you could begin talking about um, what draws you to landscape as a subject. I don't really know, except that something clicks. I see something and I want to paint it. And it's usually shapes and forms and color and, um, and a mood. I know that uh, I've spent a lot of time walking around and I finally settle on something that looks like I would want to do it. And it could be something at my feet or something in the distance. And I've had many happy hours just sitting outside by myself working on a, on a piece. I've done a lot of work in pastel outdoors because it's much easier to carry and uh, it doesn't rub off on your clothes like wet paint would. I know these landscapes um, um, are in places all across Canada, the North, Newfoundland, yes. Manitoba. Are there any uh, favorite spots that you have perhaps? I, well, recently I've really enjoyed Newfoundland. It's, it's rugged and it's quaint at the same time and colorful and, and a, a nice uh, combination of being reasonably comfortable in where you stay and uh, comfortable in working outside too. But I have stayed in much more uncomfortable places which are fabulous to me. So. Yeah, are you, are you thinking about uh, the north now? Maybe? The north, yes, yeah. was challenging. I was younger when I was doing it, but still, it was less than 15 years ago. I was sleeping in the back of a truck up in the Yukon in Alaska. So. Wow, even that recent? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Because I read in, in the wonderful book that Pat Bowie put together on, on your life, um, that at one point when you turned 50, you had kind of cashed in everything and just decided to go for it. Yes. And you went up north, you hitchhiked at one point. Yes. Yeah. Well, up north you hitchhike on planes more than you do because yeah. the roads don't connect anything. There are yeah. roads around the town or the village. and uh, But uh, if you play your cards right and don't upset people, they they come forward with a ride and it's all done under the table because there's no one checking, and uh, very a lot of pilots have uh, landscapes or drawings of their plane. And <laughs> <laughs> oh right, yeah. a barter system. A barter system, yeah. yes. So obviously, it's important for you to be in the location when you're painting. It, it always has. Yeah. I mean, I've, lately I've had to work from pastels that I did 30 years ago, mm -hmm. which I hadn't realized at the time would be a good resource for painting. Um, working from them as sketches and I'm amazed at how much the whole thing comes back to me. It's in my head, in some lobe of my brain, all these visual things are still there yeah. and and I can rework them probably with a, a different kind of insight that I had sitting in the grass with the mosquitoes working on me. You know? Can you talk a bit more about um, the process you went through when you set up in the bush to do some of these landscapes? Yes, well it got better and better. When I first went north, I took a box of 20 canvases, sort of nested in a box, and uh, my paints and my pastels in a tackle box, and uh, a couple of pieces of masonite with uh, elastic bands that held them together with paper in between them, and a backpack and an aluminum folding easel and a, a foam rubber to sit on, and like endless bits of of supplies and then I realized that it's really hard to work outside any distance from where you're staying with a wet canvas because it's windy and bugs would get embedded yeah. in the wet paint and so on. So more texture than you bargained for. More texture, yeah. So I would save that for when the weather was down and I would work inside with it. But working outside the the pastel worked well because basically it works very much like oil does. I mean, it's not a transparent medium, and you sort of work from a medium tone to light and to dark, and um, it translates well into oil. So me. was it was it oil pastel you used or no, chalk? No, soft pastel. Soft pastel. Yes. Yeah. And then you would you would do smaller versions, and then you would you go do, back. Yes. 
and and build them up to larger works yes. where you were staying or would you do it when I you came back to Winnipeg? When I came home I would just keep firing them off sometimes two a day yeah and um, come home with with a big selection of work mm -hmm. and a lot of them I framed the good ones because they had a kind of uh, spontaneity about yeah. them Immediate that thing. you wouldn't get over a studio piece yeah. and um, and they were in impossible places, mm -hmm. not places you could set up a large canvas and work day after day on. And then the immediacy too, I mean you would capture the light, you know, in that yes. way much better I would think, yeah. Yes, yeah. it was a good medium. I mean, I tried watercolor, but mm -hmm. it would freeze. I mean, sometimes it was below freezing and, mm -hmm. and um, it was an interesting thing to see, ice crystals, <laughs> but <laughs> I was I was fighting them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Because I remember, uh, yeah, you did a lot with the snow in it. Because I keep yes. thinking you're up there in the summer, but not necessarily. Well, there's, there's still snow in the recesses in the northern sides of things, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. It's very graphic. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's, it's rugged country. Mm -hmm. um, to walk out a few miles, it's a, it's a challenging hike. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and then to find a nice little spot to work. The hours go, I mean, when I was there, nobody was checking up on me or yeah. whether I was home or not. Or yeah. Back in the town. And see if a bear had caught you or something. Yeah, you I don't know one. why. Yeah. I, maybe I had a death wish, I don't know. But I, I never really thought about bears. No, you're an artist and you're yeah. just following your passion. And when I know. did work in places where there were other people, it was in a camp on Devon Island. That's the one north of Baffin. Mm -hmm. And they made me take a bear thing with me. It was like a big shell. Mm -hmm. And it was in a plastic container, like a plastic wrapper. And the instructions where you had to tear the plastic open and then pull something apart and then bang something on something else and then throw it at the bear. Well, forget oh, wow. it, you know. Five the steps. plastic it had to chew off. So I, I sort of figured, well, I could see 90 seals out on the ice sunning themselves. I thought he'd go for them before me. So Yeah, there you go. I just calmed myself with that. Yeah, yeah. no. Uh, and also notice in the collection at St. Paul, um, a lot of the landscapes have a, a vantage point kind of three quarters of the way up. Yes. And on a whole, the palette is quite subdued. Can yes. you talk a bit about your color choices? Well, it's interesting. When I was, when I was painting up north, uh, there's some stuff growing that is green, but basically green isn't a big color. And when you get down south, you have to deal with green, and green is a very... Uh, brilliant color as it comes out of the tube and it doesn't it doesn't work with uh, the other colors so to uh well the, the chagrin of people who've tried to reproduce them that my greens are are really mixed quite heavily mm -hmm. and uh certainly my teacher john lyman who was my painting teacher years ago he was big on mixing colors, and he's, I don't know who he was quoting, but he said, uh, give me mud, and I'll make it look like the skin of a Venus wow. if I'm allowed to surround it by my own colors. Uh -huh. Interesting. So would you blend, what is it, like umber into the green, or maybe some grays? I'm just trying yes. to, yeah, yeah, to tone it down. Um, the saturation. No, it wouldn't be gray, but I would, I would do... Um, Probably uh, burnt sienna. Yeah, burnt sienna, the brown. But uh, until I got the color I want, that would mm -hmm. give you a good mossy green. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, you know, but not a lot of, of brown or black in with it, no. Yeah, yeah I was thinking sienna, actually. Yes. Yeah, to tone it down. Because I, uh, well, okay, that's, that's great. Now I want to focus on um, the painting called The Lake. Is that the one from yes. 2007, I believe? Um, can you just um, talk a bit about that painting and where you did it and how it came about? Actually, I did it at Menaki. Oh. And um, from a boathouse. And that at that little sort of cove in the foreground had ducks in it, actually. They they didn't make it into the painting. <laughs> I don't put a lot of wildlife in paintings. That, yeah, that's another thing I was going to ask yes. about. Yeah. 
but it's the landscape. Yes, yeah. and uh, the landscapes are usually devoid of, of any animals. Mm -hmm. um, I did I did a painting of the uh, Queen Charlotte's, and they have they have these tiny little deer there, and I put a deer in because it, it helped with the scale of everything else. Yeah, but uh, no, so that that piece of the lake I've. I've seen people react to it, and it it is because they feel they've been there, and it's a, it's a place that. I guess the the isolation and the and the peacefulness of it is evocative, and they they have whether it's their lake or a lake they've been to somewhere else. It's a kind of iconic lake, and it's it's interesting to me. Every so often, I do something like that, and and hit people where they where they're tender, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I find it, yeah, tender is a good word. And um, it's like a distilled moment in time. And you've yes. captured this, and there's a softness to it. And, yeah, you, you bring the viewer in, because I feel like I'm standing right there at the edge of the lake, you know, gazing at it. Right? Yes. Yeah, so, lovely. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Mary. I hope that people go to St. Paul's and uh, enjoy the wonderful landscape well, that you've given us. It certainly is a look around our country, which is amazing. Yeah. Amazing in places that people don't get to yeah. as well. Yeah. well. It's lovely. Thank you again. Thank you.